grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And to the of your leader. Well, good morning to you, particularly if it happens to be your birthday tomorrow. <laughs> we won't embarrass that person any further by singing happy birthday. Instead, we're going to turn to our hymn books and sing 205 From Heaven You Came, Helpless Faith. So let's stand as we're able to as we sing to our God. have a seat. I should perhaps say uh, it, this is a communion service despite the technology being in the way at the moment it will get moved and we will share communion later on together. But as we do now let's prepare our hearts to worship God. 
God. And we come to our God by saying together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the faults of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And we bring before our forgiving God the areas of our lives where we may have fallen short of loving him and loving others. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And the second is this, Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the laws and the prophets. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord, have have mercy. mercy. And God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought and word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. And so, Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand if you are able to as we continue our worship of God. And we say together, Glory, Glory to, to God, God in the highest, and, and peace to his people on earth. earth. Lord God, God Heavenly King, King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Please be seated. Let us pray. Gracious God, you called us to fullness of life. Deliver us from unbelief and banish our anxieties with the liberating love of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We have our prayer for you. The reading is taken from Galatians chapter 5 beginning at verse 13. You, my brothers, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the sinful nature, rather serve one another in love. The entire law is summed up in a single command, love your neighbour as yourself. 
If you keep on biting and devouring each other, watch out or you will be destroyed by each other. So I say, live by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of sinful nature. For the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the Spirit and the Spirit that is contrary to the sinful nature. They are in conflict with each other so that you do not do what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. The acts of the sinful nature are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions and envy, drunkenness, orgies and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the sinful nature with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking and envying each other. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Anne. Uh, if you remember, uh, we started a series a little while ago, and in a little while, Polly will come and continue that series for us on fruitfulness on the front line. Where are, where are you know, how are you fruitful for God wherever you are during the week? For some of us, that's work. For others of us, that's within the family, um, or perhaps the groups and clubs we go to. But Polly's going to share a bit more about fruitfulness on the front line a bit later. But for now, we're going to turn to 317 in our hymn books. As we sing together, how deep the Father's love. Stand if let's stand if we're able to.
Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory Glory to you. Then James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to him. Teacher, they said, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. What do you want me to do for you, he asked. And they replied, let one of us sit at your right and the other at your left in your glory. You don't know what you are asking, Jesus said. Can you drink the cup I drink? Or be baptised with the baptism I am baptised with? We can, they answered. Jesus said to them, You will drink the cup I drink, and be baptised with the baptism I am baptised with, but to sit at my right or left is not for me to grant. These places belong to those for whom they have been prepared. When the ten heard about this, they became indignant with James and John. Jesus called them together and said, You know that those who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Do have a seat, next one name's Polly. You want me to do it, do you? As we know, Polly's uh, not only been a member of the church forever, more than well I can work out, but it's also in training at the moment. <coughs> Do be praying for Polly and Mike and the guys. Um, it's not easy to mix with all the family life in and training at the same time. But let's pray for Polly now. Father, as Polly comes to share what you have placed on her heart, uh, for this series of fruitfulness on the front line, we pray that uh, you will highlight to us our front line and you will highlight to us, through your spirit, the words that we need to hear, particularly from Polly today. Amen. Amen. Last month, Max introduced us our series, Fruitfulness on the Front Line, and he asked us a question. He asked us, What does it mean to be a fruitful church? What does it mean to be a fruitful individual on the front line? And I don't know if you've been thinking about that or if it's completely gone out of your mind. But today we're carrying on with that series and for the next couple of weeks we'll be looking at that before we um, have a break. And uh, I think as Max said, um, this series is going to take us a while because of all of the other things that are happening in between. But it doesn't mean it's not important. And actually sometimes it's good to have a pause between so we can actually think and let it really go down into us and let the roots roots grow down so we can actually take things from it. Okay, so fruitfulness on the front line. Uh, Anne so beautifully read for us from that passage from Galatians and you might want to have your Bible open at Galatians 5 because that is the passage I'm going to be concentrating on today. And it says in there, the fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. If we were just full of those, and if that exuded from us, what a different place our world would be. If we all had love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And today's reading from Galatians is probably a passage you've heard lots of times before. I just want to go back a little bit, because Galatians 5, chapter 1 says, It's for freedom that Christ set us free, no longer to be subject to a yoke of slavery. I don't know if, like me, when you hear words that have been used in a song, if that song then just keeps going through your head. Uh, Because as I was reading that the other day, I couldn't then stop singing, Jesus, we celebrate your victory. It was for freedom that Christ has set us free, no longer to be a subject 
for a yoke of slavery. And the passage we had today, starting at verse 13, you are called to be free, but don't use your freedom to indulge others. Yes, you're called to be free, but that doesn't mean you can do what you want when you want. It doesn't mean you can do what you want without any regard or any respect for anybody else. Yes, we've got freedom, but just because I can do something doesn't mean I have to. And you know, that's a phrase I use an awful lot at home. Just because you can doesn't mean you have to. But we need to use our freedom to humbly serve one another in love. And Jesus summarised the whole law in one saying, love your neighbour as yourself. And we've said those words in our communion service today, haven't we? Love your neighbour as yourself. Because you see, we need to live by the Spirit and not by the flesh. And as Christians, we are full of the Holy Spirit. We have the Holy Spirit living within us. Being led by the Spirit means we're not under the law, but instead we can display the fruit of the Spirit. And what I've put up there is the words we had in our passage from the NIV Bible. But actually there are other versions of that if you look at other um, editions of the Bible. Sometimes it says forbearance instead of patience. Sometimes it's generosity instead of goodness. Sometimes it's gentleness instead of faithfulness. In the message, it says, don't use your freedom as an excuse to do what you want and destroy your freedom. Rather, use your freedom to serve one another in love. That's how freedom grows. What happens when we live God's way? He brings gifts into our life, much the same as the way that fruit appears in an orchard. Not limited to that. And I don't think this passage in Galatians was ever meant to be, this is a set list and these are the only fruits of the Spirit that you will ever get. I think actually this is an example of the fruits that there can be. And earlier this year I spoke to you about my amazing raspberry bush and how full of fruit it's been this year. And every time I thought it was the last crop, it just kept on going and kept on going. And as I looked out in my garden yesterday at my raspberry bush, I actually saw a real mess. And I'm just thinking, actually, how much of that mess do I need to cut back this winter? To let it flourish again next year. And it got me to think about the fruits in my life. And how at times, we need to be cut back, we need to be pruned to let that fruit grow. Because you see, fruit doesn't just happen, it needs to be cultivated. And if we want to model godly character, we need to be fruitful. That means there are going to be tough times when we need to be cut back. It also means we need to let our roots grow down into God. Now, when I was um, about 18, and I was on a scripture union holiday, um, they read this verse to us from Colossians 2. Colossians 2, 6 to 7. And they said, we want you to learn this. And I'm so pleased I did learn these verses. And I learnt it from the Living Bible. And now, just as you trusted Christ to save you, trust him too for each day's problems. Live in vital union with him. Let your roots grow down into him and draw up nourishment from him. See that you go on growing in the Lord and become strong and vigorous in the truth you were taught. Let your lives overflow with joy and thanksgiving for all he has done. And for me, when I was thinking about fruitfulness on the front line, I think, actually, if I'm trusting God, for every day's problems. Because let's face it, every day does bring problems, doesn't it? We don't just sail through the world. And those of you who know me well, actually these last five weeks have been lots of problems. Massive, massive problems. 
But that doesn't mean God isn't here with us in the problems. But it does mean I need to let my roots grow down into him. And why do I do that? So I can draw up nourishment from him. Your roots grow down so you can draw up nourishment, but also your roots grow down. If you've got strong roots, when those storms come, it's hard to be knocked over, isn't it? If you don't have roots, you get blown away. And then I love the way this is active. See that you go on growing in the Lord. We don't grow once and stop. We need to keep on growing in the Lord and become strong and vigorous in the truth. So let your lives overflow with joy and thanksgiving for all he has done. So, I've got a question for you. Which of the fruits do you need more of in your life? How are you with love? Do you know, sometimes the people, there's some people it's easy to love. And there's some people it's not easy to love. And even with those people who are easy to love, those who are close to you, there are times when it's quite hard to love them. Particularly when you've had teenagers and they throw things back in your face, but actually you've just got to be there with love. What about this one? How are you with joy? Do you let joy overflow? Peace. Do you know, we live in such a wonderful part of the country, don't we? That actually when I need peace, I so often go to nature. Go to the sea, go to the countryside. And just find that peace. Where do you find peace? I once had this poster on my bedroom wall. Lord, grant me patience, but please hurry. Patience is one that I really do struggle with. I do want more of it, but I want it now. And actually, sometimes we just have to learn to wait, don't we? And that waiting can be so hard. What about kindness? What are the acts of kindness that you do? I'm going to challenge you this week just to do one random act of kindness. Could be to a family member, could be a neighbour, could be somebody you don't even know. What will that random act of kindness be? It could be as simple as a smile and a hello as you walk into a shop. It could be as simple as holding a door for somebody, helping with their bags. It could be going round to that neighbour and just checking, hi, are you okay? Because, you know, during the pandemic, we were quite good at that, looking out for one another. And I think as we've got back into life, perhaps we've forgotten how to be kind. Goodness, who doesn't want a bit of goodness in their life? Faithfulness. Being faithful, being true to things. How lovely it would be at the end of our life to hear somebody say, you're my good and faithful friend. Through it all, you were faithful. Gentleness. Let's not plough through with our heavy boots, but be gentle with one another. Sometimes along gentleness, I think of being calm as well. And uh, this Thursday, I was, um, I was out and about with Joe, my 14-year-old, because he had an inset day. And so we decided, he decided that we were going to go to the garage lounge in South Sea for our breakfast, because that's what he really wanted to do. Uh, and then after that, I said, come on, what else should we do? And we just went to South Sea Seafront. We spent a bit of time on the pier and then we just went and stood by the sea and threw stones in the sea. Which has always been one of my boys' favourite things to do. And uh, it was interesting because I had all sorts of things running through my mind. 
all sorts of issues I'm trying to sort out for Jack. And in the midst of that, Joe said to me, I like going out with you. You're nice and calm. And you know what? To him, I might have appeared like a swan. Really calm on the surface, but goodness me, underneath, I was just paddling like mad to survive and to get through the day. And then this one, self-control. Do you know, if we had self-control, the others would be easy, wouldn't they? You know, I can resist anything except temptation. And how true is that for, for some of us? Who are the people, what are the situations where you know you've needed God's Spirit to help you? What are the situations where you wish you'd called on him to help you? Where you wish you could have been just a wee bit different? Of course, Paul's list of the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians is not meant to be exhaustive. There are other lists. But for now, let me focus on two streams of thought. First, selfless love. Most of the fruit involve our attitude and behaviour towards other people, love for others, patience and gentleness with others, kindness, goodness, faithfulness to others. And yes, self-control, because when I'm not self-controlled, someone else usually gets hurt. The second strand of thought is a kind of inner assurance, joy and peace. Now, I don't think joy means that we have to be highly carbonated, constantly effervescent people. There are plenty of joyous Christian people who aren't extroverts, but there's just something about them, isn't there? Something luminous that radiates out, something that makes you just pleased to see them walk into a room. In Galatians, Paul summarises it all as freedom. Christ's grace and love frees us from the power of sin and frees us from the hamster wheel of legalism. His love graces us with that deep assurance of God's love, which gives us joy and peace and enables us to be other-centred. As the Apostle John puts it, we love because God first loved us. So godly character springs from our new identity in Christ. We are new creatures. Godly character ripens from the power of his spirit working in us in his own quiet and determined way. Actually, I suspect that most of us will one day be joyously surprised, probably astonished by the way God has chosen to work through us. May the Lord shine through you this week. So that was a little bit from the Fruitfulness on the Frontline video, but actually I think that summarised really nicely uh, the bits that um, I was saying. And uh, the other day, Debs in the office just happened to send this to me. And you probably can't read it from where you are, so I'll read it out to you because it came as a picture so I couldn't make it bigger. But it really fitted in, I think, with what I wanted to say to you. You're holding a cup of coffee when someone comes along and bumps into you, making you spill your coffee everywhere. Why did you spill coffee? Well, you spilt coffee because coffee was in your cup. Had there been tea in your cup, you would have spilled tea. The point is, whatever is inside the cup is what will spill out. Therefore, when life comes along and shakes you, which will happen, whatever is inside you will come out. It's easy to fake it until you get rattled. So we have to ask ourselves, what's in my cup? When life gets tough, what spills out? Joy, gratefulness, peace, humility? Or does anger, bitterness, harsh words and reactions come out? You choose. Today, let's work towards filling our cups with gratitude, forgiveness, joy, words of affirmation, kindness, gentleness and love for others. We need to fill our cup, don't we, with those gifts of the Spirit. So that when we do get rattled, they are the things that spill out. And just one final thing I want to leave with you. Just be patient, because God's not finished with me yet. Amen.
Thank you very much, Polly. That last uh, quote as well, that last passage you read, of course, is a reflection of um, what the Bible says about out, out of the heart, meditation of the heart. And um, those words come out of our mouths, aren't they? So there you go. Challenging for us this week, isn't it? I'm going to go away with that one. That video, by the way, will also be, um, the full video that Polly showed a bit of, will also be on the uh, website where, where Polly's sermon is. So if you want to see the full video, you can do that. I'll put that on later on. So let's um, stand if we're able to as we uh, declare together our faith in our God. Can we say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Can you please be seated for our prayers? Let us pray. Blessed are you, Lord our God, for you give us life, you give us love, you give us yourself. May we in turn learn to give our life and love and ourselves to you. Almighty God, we pray for those who occupy high office in the nations of the world. And we pray for our own newly reformed government. Help them to govern wisely and well, and to seek the welfare of all their people. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray for all who are exploited by others. Those who live in fear of violence, and those denied freedom of speech and movement. We bring to you the people of Ukraine, of Syria, of Iraq, and all refugees fleeing their homes and countries. We remember too our own armed forces, often serving far from home, and pray that you will be with them, their families and loved ones. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Yeah. Dear Lord, we ask that you would look with compassion on those who mourn. We especially think of the parents and families of the infant children and their teachers murdered in Thailand, and those who died in Donegal. Give them consolation and courage, and we pray that in your time they may come to find comfort and peace. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the children and young people of our parish. Help us to appreciate them, be open to their insights and to nurture their faith. Help those who will prepare for and help to lead our children in the Space Cadets program, planned for half term. May it bring an insight to them of your world and your love for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
We pray for our own parish, for Max, our rector, and Susie, and for Jill, our curate. We pray also for the church wardens and the PCC, that they may prayerfully carry out their duties. We bring before God all who are sick, in mind, body or spirit, and are mentioned on our weekly sheet. And those for whom we are concerned or worried. Also, all whose situations weigh heavily on us, asking for his healing and peace. We pray too for the families of those who have recently died including Kevin Bosper. In a moment of quiet, we remember those close to our own hearts. And finally, Lord, we pray that our love for one another shown in our relationships and actions, may become beacons of your light. May all those who we meet come to know that we are your disciples. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends, may the God of peace make you completely holy, ready for the coming of our Lord Jesus. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of the peace. And we can grab our hymn books and turn to 174, where we shall sing to our Lord, Father of Heaven.
ever see. So we're going to be using prayer B as we normally do on page 9. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who were sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh as your son. Born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross, and he put an end to death by dying for us, and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will, and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave me thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption as we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. We bring before you this bread and this cup. And we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup. So that we, in the company of all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father forever and ever. Amen. And so as Jesus taught us, we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in the one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. And so knowing God's Spirit is with us, my friends, draw near with faith and receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, 
and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table, but you, Lord, are the God of our salvation, and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we, with the whole company of Christ, may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. The body of Christ broken for all God's people. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for all God's people. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we pray that your grace may always proceed and follow us and make us continually to be given to all good works through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we say together, Father, Father of all, all, we, we give, give you thanks, thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace, and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us. So we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, thank you for sharing communion with us today. It's been lovely to do that. Just a couple of family notices. You've got your notice sheet, so I won't read that to you. Uh, but um, just as uh, Sandra was praying for, do be praying for the that Hampton Space for Cadets over half term, um, uh, beginning to uh, fill up as well. So if you know anyone who would like that, there are some of these at the back. Um, and recommend to them they book in Sharpish just to make sure they get a place for that. And also to say as well, um, uh, on the 6th of November, we will have our memory service that we normally have uh, around this time of year. And so there are some of those at the back. Do be sharing those, particularly with those you know who have lost loved ones over the last few years. That to be led by our wonderful Kira. So that's good. All right, but for now, we're going to turn in our hymn books to our last hymn of worship, 387, as we sing Jesus is Lord. Let's stand if we're able to.
My friends, the love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. The joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank <laughs> you. 